plaintiff, Patricia Watts, says the defendant is her cousin, but she's a manipulative con artist. Patricia claims she moved into the defendant's home, but after a dispute about Patricia calling DCFS on a neighbor, the defendant told her to move out and then refused to return her property, so she's suing. Defendant Erica McRae says Patricia is extremely insecure and she will try to steal anyone's husband. Erica insists she gave Patricia every opportunity to get her property and she's countersuing for defamation of character. Start with you. This is my cousin Erica. Um, Erica and I have a lot of history together. For Good one, history? Eric, uh, some. Erica is uh, somewhat of a con artist. She's very manipulative. She sometimes tries to get her way by being very petty. Um, I remember one time we was with her mom. She tried to con her mom out of a $10 pair of shoes. Another time, me and Erica, um, I came home from church. Erica was doing uh, what was about to do a little girl's hair, and she lied and told the little girl she knew how to do the style, and she didn't. Erica's in the back on YouTube trying to figure out how to do the hairstyle as the client was sitting there. I convinced the client to do going for a whole nother hairstyle, which she went with, and me and Erica did the hairstyle together. Erica, we didn't finish on the first day, so the next day Erica asked me could I finish the style for her. I went ahead and did it, and at the end of the day I walked away with $5 for over a nine hour hairstyle. How much did she get? Uh, she never told me. But when I Maybe told her- Maybe she didn't get but 10. Because I- right? <laughs> No, she didn't get 10 for well, sure. I actually got 30. Well, why did you only get one um, Because place? she owed me 20. Because she owed you 20? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, what do you say about these kindish ways? First of all, <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Your Honor, I want to say, Patricia, she just so insecure about herself. And then I want to let you know, to let your um, audience know, to hold a husband on their side because she will take them. And she will, she's liable to go on their purse to a piece of candy if she ain't eating, she keeping she's, up confusion. She on their husband and their candy. Exactly. That's the type and of person she purse. is, yes. Triple threat. <laughs> Candy, the purse, and the husband. Go ahead. <laughs> then I want to tell you and Doyle that I am in love with y'all. Uh -oh. <laughs> I have a husband. He know that. You keep me stand, You keep me laughing on the well, floor. You, gotta, you have a husband, you have me, and you have Doyle. You three yes. deep. Yes. <laughs> oh, Andy. It's a lot of juggling. Ma'am, tell me about this property and the illegal eviction. In July of 2012, I ran into some hardship times in my life, and Erica let me stay with her, me and my three-year-old daughter at the time. So in January of 2013, I, uh, our neighbor, her friend, I went downstairs to use the neighbor's phone. And when I'm using the phone, I find out that I went through a, saw a text message in, a, in her friend's phone that said that her and her boyfriend was plotting to steal my vehicle. So that, that was on a Saturday. I didn't react to it then. I waited. I wanted to go to church, talk to my pastor about it, you know. So I wouldn't, like, just go off the handle on her. So Sunday when I got home, me and Erica both confronted her friend, the downstairs neighbor, and the girl came upstairs. She couldn't deny uh, plotting to steal my car. And I actually have a video of that if you would like to see it. Of her plotting to steal your car? Of me confronting her about but stealing my car. All right, well, let's see it. And Ever Erica's right there, too. Right, and here. you ain't do because nothing. Right. That shit did. Right. Because when I tell you, I believe in God. Irritate. Loud. The preacher told you to say all that? No. <laughs> exactly. What happened was, like I, I said, you said she... your pastor told you to go. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I wanted to. I wanted to go to church and pray about it before I just went crazy. And you said you went and I didn't spoke touch to her, your though. pastor, and your pastor I didn't said touch go her. over there. I didn't touch her. Now, that girl is like literally like a size zero. I could have hurt that girl seriously. Let's get to the eviction and the property. That okay, you're so her for. Um, after um, this was. After the day after this happened, mm -hmm. um, I called DCFS on um, her friend, the neighbor, because I just felt like she was ratchet. You got your kids sleeping on floors while you laying in the bed with a man. You got a whole nother baby who sleep in a, a car seat all the time. So I called DCFS. 
The next day, I told Erica that I called DCFS. Erica got mad at me because she, because we both of us smoke mm -hmm. weed, we both drink, so she felt like I was endangering our kids by calling DCFS because she felt like our kids would get taken away. And I was trying to tell Erica, we not ratchet. Yeah, we smoke, but we don't smoke in front of our kids. You know what I'm saying? What is, I mean, long we ain't doing it in front of our kids. Our kids ain't sleeping on no flow. Our kids have baths every night. Our kids getting in the bed, having a meal, everything. So mm -hmm. our kids wouldn't get taken away. Erica still was mad. So she ended up telling me that she didn't want me to live there no more because she didn't want that kind of heat at her house. Cool. I can't do nothing but leave because I'm not on the lease. But she tells me to leave. And literally the next day, I packed one bag, one book bag for me and my baby and went to my grandma's house. I called Erica, calling her and calling her. Every time I call her to get the rest of my stuff, Erica tell me she don't want me to be at her now, house. When did you leave? January of 2013. All right. So in March is when, I mean, I was calling her all in between there trying to see when and I could get my stuff. what was happening when you called? She would tell me she didn't want me at her house without the uh, without her being there, said That's she was lie. at work. So for three like months that. she dodged you? That's a lie. Like two and a half, yes. Okay, and then what happened in March? In March, I finally got irritated and just went over there. And I still had my keys to her apartment. And you when I went over there. You talked to her like you did on there? No, uh uh. It wasn't, okay. it wasn't never hostile. Because okay. when she told me she wanted me to go, you know what I'm saying? So we didn't be. So, you keep furniture for three months and you never got hostile? I mean, yeah, it got hostile eventually, but when I went over there, it wasn't no hostile because okay. she didn't so let me happened? in. She didn't oh. let me in. The, the locks were changed. I still and had to That's why you're suing apartment. for your property? Yes, sir. You never so, got it? No, I still don't have it. So the next time I went over there in, in March, and then three weeks later, I went over there again. And I found out from one of the neighbors in the building that Erica had moved. To this day, I don't know where Erica okay. lives. Do you have the items? Yes, I do. Ma'am, let me hear from you. First of all, Your Honor, Patricia telling us a lie. Patricia texted my phone and told me in August. I have the texts right August. here. August? Yes. Tell me, you tell me before you give me She's text saying, messages. oh my what God, cousin, I'm sorry. I haven't came and got my sugar honey iced tea yet. Let's see if you're saying that you didn't withhold her things. No, I did not. It took Patricia. She failed to come and get them. Exactly, it took Patricia seven months to contact me yeah. about her things. Ma'am? No. No. It, did not. it didn't take seven months because when I first moved out, I was trying to get my things. And I ended up having to go down to um, Southern Illinois with my mom. And I, once I was down there, it was hard for me to get down there. She had, like, all my stuff is at her house. Oh my God, cousin. I'm so sorry I haven't gotten my S yet. You apologizing to her, let alone her withholding your things. Ma'am, as of August, you were telling her you were sorry you hadn't come and picked them up, meaning that you knew you had access. She's telling you to come and get it. And on August 6th, you're telling her you're sorry that you hadn't come and gotten it. What is the defamation for? She was slandering my name to one How of so? our mutual friends. She, um, the mutual friend called her up talking about a, um, a hair hairdo, mm -hmm. and next thing you know, she switched the subject, trash in my name. What'd she say? She was calling me all type of bum, saying that um, if I needed the furniture, all I had to do was ask her for the furniture, and uh, that basically, that's it. That's and gossip. I have it what else? Your wages. How does she owe you for wages? From coming to court for today and yesterday. Yeah, you're right, because this is a straight out lie, ma'am. You're trying to con, you're talking about she's the con artist. You're trying to con the day. How much do you make per day, ma'am? 175. 175, your hairdresser? Yes. That's about right. 350 <laughs> is your judgment, and yours is dismissed, ma'am. Have a good Thank day. Thank you, Judge Masters. I told you I was going to get you back. That's what happened when you try to be slick. Right, I know. You can't out slick the slicks, the baby. Yeah, I know. <laughs> know that. I know. Believe that. I know. My mama taught me real well. Right. I still love my cousin no matter what. She's still going to be my cousin, but you can't do a person like that. When you wrong, you wrong. I still love her too, and that's all I got to say.